All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link with everyone you know. Uh, <clears throat> today, uh, our video, in, as a start, is a kind of a commercial. Uh, a company from Germany uh, decided to sell pork, uh, but this pork is very unique. It is halal. So I wanted to help them to promote this product, and uh, because I have connection with a lot of uh, Indonesian, so maybe we can import this pork, which is halal pork, to Indonesia. So uh, please feel free to call the company number, which is going to be shown in the <clears throat> sticker there, and make as orders as you can, because I think their supply is limited. Halal pork. Halal pork is very healthy. It's made from pork, but it is halal. And because it's halal, that's mean all Muslims can eat it, and there's no worry. You can make anything halal, just put a sticker, it says halal. As simple as that. So, you know, here we see some kind of a fantasy and some kind of a stupidity uh, in the Western world and all the, those who call themselves even customers. You know, in the Muslim world and in the Western world, they learn that the Muslims, they buy anything, it says halal. Okay, put a sticker, say halal. I mean, what's wrong? I saw with my own eyes a shoe, and the shoe it says halal, as if you are going to eat it. I saw a sardine, it says halal. Sardine. <laughs> so here you notice the stupidity. <clears throat> now I named my video title as Halal Pork for Indonesia, but uh, we will not talk about much about this. Somebody sent me a video of uh, somebody uh, saying that Jesus said uh, uh, Allah and I don't think he's a Muslim I think he's just an idiot so this guy simply uh, he made a video saying that Jesus said uh, look like he said uh, Allah how he said that because he said Elohim and Elohim is Allah and how he come to this conclusion he said many Arab Christians they speak Arabic and they say the word Allah and uh, he did search in the Aramaic dictionary and he found that the word uh, in the Arab Aramaic dictionary is Allah, uh, Aloha. And that made him come with the conclusion that obviously Allah and Elohim and etc. all is the same thing. First of all, for this idiot who made this video, <clears throat> Allah is not an Arabic word and it's not one word. Even the Aramaic you see in the front of you, it's not one word, but for an idiot like you, it is. It is two words. Al, which is a word meaning God. Hua, which is He, He is the God. Or Allah, Al, Al, U, uh, uh, or let us say Allah, is like saying the God. But the word God is A-L. And this is not a name. This is not a name. This is just a word meaning God. It had nothing to do with any name. So, yes, it's Aramaic. And the Aramaic are the source of all the languages in the Middle East. So, it is Al, which is God. This is why we say Baal. Baal. Ba is the name of the of of uh, uh, the God, and Al is the word meaning God. So Al is a word meaning God. It's not a name. So you are an idiot. Don't mix things up. So Aloha. It's not one word. It is Al and the God. The God. But it's not a name. Still, it's not a name. Now, if we go to the uh, <clears throat> And yes, the uh, Allah. This is why the Muslims do not know what Allah mean because it is Aramaic. It has nothing to do with the Arabic. Nothing in the nothing in the religion of Islam is Arabic. There's nothing is called Arabic. Even Arabic itself is not a language by itself. Now, if we go to the Quran, and we explain that many times.
Yeah, I will explain to you. Eel, Eel simply is a word mean God. It's not a name. Eel is a, is in the New Hebrew. In the Old Hebrew, which is coming from the Aramaic, it is Al. So Israel was Israel. Mikael was Mikael. Okay. Ishmael was not Ishmael, was Ishmael. So in the New Hebrew, Al or Al became El. So both of them is the same, but it's not a name. It's just a word meaning God, which means the Aramaic they use it, the Hebrew they use it. The, 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 you know, there is many nations in that territory. They use this word, which means God, but doesn't mean any God except the God you worship. So each one you use it for his God. Like in English now, I say God, a Muslim say God, but his God is not my God. All right? <clears throat> Eloha is not... Is not a name too. All those, uh, the God of the Christians, first of all, He does not have a name. There's no name for Him. And this is the this is the stupidity of many people. They keep saying, like when God He says supposedly His name, He says I am who I am, which means there is no name for no name can describe Him, no name can contain Him, and even the Jews avoid saying the name of God for this is an insult to God, because He is Almighty. So Jews don't say and don't don't claim a name. So there is no name to speak of, and there is no name uh, 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 to be mentioned in the Bible. However, in Islam, the story is different. You see, if you read any Islamic translation, and for me, I do not read the translation. Arabic is my first language. You will see right away it says, "Praise be to Al Lah." Now Allah, it became one word through through time because it's pronounced together, al lah. But in fact, it is two words. Look what happened here. This is the Arabic language, and let us zoom in. You will notice in the first word of Allah, there is the letter a l, alif. Now we need to make it uh, thin. Give me a second. <clears throat> You notice here with me there is a letter which is not exist here do you notice but supposedly both names are the same this is Allah and this is Allah the fact no it's not the first one is Allah the second one is Li La the second one is Li La so this one is Al La. The first one, the second one here is Li La. So, what is missing between the first one and the second one? The missing thing is a letter, if you notice. This letter here. <clears throat> you see this letter is missing the first letter is not here we don't find it here so what is from between them and why why is that because the first one it says al la which means al la god la this is the real word here li in arabic mean two li la so alhamdu Alhamdu, which means thanks. Li mean to. La, that is the name of the God. So the name of the God of Islam is La. Is not Ilah. Is not Al Ilah. It is not Allah. It's not Elohim. <clears throat> None of those things. And only donkeys, they keep saying the same thing, repeating because of their ignorance. So the word Allah contains two words Al La. To make it simple, we type it in English. Al in the Arabic language today is equal to the. Yeah, that is an ex other example. Yeah. Uh, a team. Al 
لا سوري سو الا is a is a two words make a sentence which is god la god la so the stupid ones who make videos trying to say to you that the bible says the word la that's stupid all the languages aramaic is the mother languages for all languages in the middle east <clears throat> with no exception well i'm saying middle east i'm talking about like uh, syria israel egypt uh, Egypt part of it is actually mixed with Arabic not all of it uh, and the Arabic 99% maybe most of it is coming from the Arabic language so al la is two words God la so what is the name of this God la you can go right now and check and you will find that la simply is the name of the moon God as simple as that in the Bible there is no name for God so anyone says to you that Elohim is the name of God, he is not really being accurate. I mean, no, I can accept it to say, okay, the Bible say Elohim, but it's not a name. And first, first of all, word Elohim does not mean God. This means gods. Gods. So, and the Muslim they say to you, where is the Trinity? Well, from the beginning of the Bible, it says Elohim. It's not a singular name of God or word of mean gods. It gods. So. Uh, uh, Elohim is not a it's not a name even like when they say yeah way it's not even a name you see yeah yeah a hey is just a statement where God he says to Musa I am who I am it's not a name nowhere God he says this is you know you okay you wanna you wanna know what my name you ask him what is your name <clears throat> you will see uh, 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 in the Bible it says in Exodus that in Elohim said to uh, Moshe, I hey ya ashir I hey ya, I am who I am. So I am who I am. It is not a name. It means just I am exist by myself. I have no creator. Nobody create me. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am everything. That's it. that's it. It's not a name. So in the Bible, all of it, there's no name. So it's very stupid of somebody trying to say that Jesus says Allah when Allah in Islamic religion is a name is not a generic word mean God you see if the Muslims they use the word Allah as a generic word we can say okay it's coming from the originally from the Aramaic and for them they are using the same as the rest of other uh, nations who copy from the Aramaic names and words but this is not the case yes they copy the word Al and La both of them they are Aramaic and this is why the Muslims do not know what they mean that's why if we ask any Muslim, if there's any Muslim right away in the chat right now, you know, I will open my sky for you if you can, if you have the courage to tell me what Allah means. They don't know. <clears throat> Not a single Muslim knows what the word Allah means. Why? Because simply, it is not Arabic. And this is proven Muhammad to be false. Because Muhammad, he says, when, uh, uh, when Adam, he was created, Allah, uh, he sneezed, and Allah, he says to him in Arabic, uh, Allah. Allah speak Arabic. And then uh, Adam answered in Arabic saying, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah. That's it. Adam, he speak Arabic from the front. And then not only that, uh, Allah, he wrote the name of Muhammad in Arabic and his name on his chair, a shahada. So Allah is not Arabic nothing in Islam is Arabic you see all what you see in front of you this is not Arabic today is presented as an Arabic language but in fact everything is coming from the Aramaic this is why the Muslims do not know like you know here look in the same chat that we are reading from if we go down you ask a Muslim what does Sirat mean every one of them he give you different meaning what is Sirat what is that the Sirat is not an Arabic word. This, this is the first verse in the Quran, I mean, a chapter. A Sirat is a Persian word, mean the bridge. The bridge, the bridge, uh, the bridge which is coming from the Sabian language, the Sabian religion, which is mixed with the, with the Persian religion. Uh, uh, there is a bridge where people they pass over hell, 
and those who they are bad people some of them their feet will go down in the bridge like the bridge like uh, it's like you know uh, let us say uh, there is holes in it <clears throat> and depending on your sin the hole will be big so you might go down to your knee in the hell you might go down to your foot you might go down to your ass you might go down to your head uh, this is the bridge the bridge and go into heaven so those who they are uh, sinners when they pass the bridge they are going to pass over hell some of them they will be burned badly some of them they will burn little bit some of them they will burn not much some of them they will not burn at all that is a sirat so Muhammad he stole that from the Persian from uh, Salman al Farisi he put it in his Quran so the Quran is a mix of languages and mix a mix of religions and if we go back uh, uh, to to Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman is a is a story from the Aramaic too. You go and you see the Aramaic. They speak about Ar Rahman, Rahimo, Rahim. This is all is Aramaic. So everything in the in the in the Quran and Islamic religion is coming from somewhere else. However, the name of the God of Islam, because it is imported name from the Aramaic people, Muslims today do not know what the name means. But the name is two words, which is Al and Lah. And Lah is the moon god. Now, if you go even to see the word Mecca, <coughs> Mecca, Mecca in Arabic mean like the the land where you have to dig down, like the the land of death, where like supposedly where you dig down in the ground to find water or something like that. But the origin of Mecca. Is not really Arabic. It's not. If you go and do a little search, you will find something is called Al Makkah, the temple of Al Makkah, which is the temple of the moon god. You see it? It's the same pronunciation, but in Yemen they say the Ka, they make it Ka. In Yemen, the letter Ka, they pronounce it as Ka. So they are writing here the name as a pronunciation, now uh, not as written. So it is the same exact word as Mecca, Al Mecca. Here you notice that Mecca start with L. Do you notice that? Do you notice Al Mecca? <clears throat> Forget about this, Yusuf. He's a kid. He's just here to disturb you. He will never call me. Al Mecca, Al Mecca, which is the moon god temple, it contained two words. And by the way, it's like the, 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 the rest of it is still exists in Yemen, unless the Muslim destroy it now in this war, because this is what they do. They still, uh, uh, you know, history destroy it, and we saw what they did in Syria and Iraq. And so this is Al Mecca temple, have this different name. It's called Awam. But it the the real name of uh, uh, Al Makkah, and Al Makkah is containing two words, Al and Makkah, which mean God or uh, Rabbul Makkah, uh, the God of Makkah, the moon, the moon God. So even even Makkah present the moon God, the word Makkah. So we can say that the word Makkah, the the city of Muhammad. It is a, a, a counterfeit of this temple. So they made a, a, a Kaaba, which counterfeit of Al Makkah temple. They made a city and they call it Al Makkah, which is the same. If you go, just to show you, in different verse in the Quran, the name of Al uh, uh, Makkah changed suddenly. It became Bakka. Then you ask yourself, what happened? How Mecca became Bakka? Do you know this? Do you know this, guys? 
Yusuf, just take take care. You are a kid. Each time you come here, we say, call me in Skype. You never call. You are a potato. Let your dad call me. So the letter Mim or M switch to be B. That is based in the dialect of those who speak the language. So Al Makkah Temple called Al Bakka Temple too, and called Al Makkah Temple too. All of them for one place. The first house was built for mankind is the house which built in Al Bakka. That is the one in Yemen, not the one in Saudi Arabia. And Muhammad he got this idea from the Sabian because the Sabian is the one who built the temple of Al Makkah in Yemen. Are you getting the point? <clears throat> so when somebody is a naive idiot, he starts saying to you, Jesus says the word Allah. That is stupid because the whole Bible does not have the word Allah. And Elohim is not a name. It is Il and like the God, Elu, Il. Il is a word mean God. It used to be A-L too. So it is not a name. And anyone can use this word at that time the aramaic use it for their gods which is a false god then the aramaic became a christian still they use it for their god which is that which our god now so uh uh, uh or a -A -L, it is not a name for any god it's just a word mean god but for the muslims the story is different for the muslims they consider allah which is containing two words, as we said, A L and La, one word, and it is a name. The reason for them they consider it as a name, I think, because of their ignorance. Because it's not one word, but because they are their ignorance of what is the origin of this word, uh, they took it, they don't know where it's coming from, and they inherit it, you know, and they repeat it. Uh, but obviously, Allah and have three daughters, and you will notice that the three daughters of Allah, their names start with at least two of them start with the name Al. Uzza. <coughs> Did you see al lat al uzza Do you notice with me here that how Al? So what is the name of the God? The name or the God is here. Those are female God, Lat. The first God, her name is Lat. But what is the first word before it? It is Al. So God Lat. God Uzza and Allah Al Al Lah uh, <clears throat> We need better program for writing in the screen Anyway, so Al Lat, Al Uzza, Al La, all is Al with it, which is a word meaning God, uh, God Allah, God La, God Lat, God Uzza. As simple as that. Do we need to explain it more? Well, those those names are mentioned in the Quran simply because Muhammad he received the satanic verses. And here you notice that the author of the Quran is a silly person. L look at this. The chapter here actually is extremely important. You see the Muslim they say, uh, don't misquote the Quran. If we start reading the Quran in this chapter, you see, by the star when it saith. Have you ever, ever heard of a star Sith? No. 
this is not about the star setting this is about the star failing so supposedly Allah is swearing by when Najmu Ida Hawa when Najmu Ida Hawa by a star when it's fall so Allah he thinks star is falling failing but this is false Metor are the stars so he thinks those are the stars who they are failing swear he swear by them and then he says your friend never error or error nor is deceived who is the one your friend Muhammad nor does he speak of his own desire so nothing whatever he speak he speak not from his own desire so what the Quran here is saying that Muhammad mouth is the mouth of God and this is absolutely stupid because later we will find the Quran saying that Muhammad he commits sin Muhammad he he, for, uh, he forbid things he should not forbid Muhammad blah 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 uh, uh, so what do you mean what whatever he say is from Allah when he do you say many stupid things according to the Quran then it says it is nothing but inspiration that he is inspired which one of mighty power has taught him okay who is those one with mighty power who taught him if you ask a Muslim any Muslim who is the one who taught Muhammad excuse me I'm drinking too much water because my throat is dry I have an ear infection I lost half of my hair <laughs> and my head I have I have a headache I apologize for keep it drinking water <clears throat> uh, which one of the mighty power has taught him who is the mighty power who taught him a Muslim he will say to you uh, Allah the fact no supposed is Jibreel you ask any Muslim you say to you Muhammad never spoke to Allah he spoke to Jibreel so the one who taught him is the mighty power how Jibreel is the mighty power one which one of mighty power that's been his God then he continue who is powerful and he grow clear to view mm -hmm. what does that mean when he saw him in the uppermost horizon Muslim they agree that Muhammad never saw Allah so who he saw now supposedly this is Jibreel okay but hold on <laughs> you will see how stupid this chapter is he saw him in the uppermost but he is the mighty of power one how the angel can be the mighty of power Allah speaking about the mighty power one if Allah is speaking about the mighty power one that's mean this mighty power is my, more mighty than Allah I mean imagine I say to you supposedly uh, you know uh, just as an example I am God and I send you some someone from me and then I call the one from me is mighty power that's stupid to say because I am the one Almighty God so how I say the one I send you as the one with mighty power then he saw him in the in the horizon and then it says he draw night and came down here the word in Arabic fatadalla tadalla let me explain to you what tadalla mean you see uh, if you see a monkey and he is holding a rope and he is going down with a rope this is what tadalla mean you can ask anyone who speak Arabic now how an angel of God or God he can do that I mean this is stupid I thought God's uh, uh, angels they fly Muhammad he said he saw him with 600 wings so the word tadalla does not make sense but let me tell you why Muhammad he used the word tadalla the word tadalla here is just because Muhammad he need a word fit with the ending you see here it have to end al-a'la fastawa tadalla adna awha so Muhammad he is trying to make a kind of a point which is a silly point so he used the word tadalla which is making so stupid because angels do not go down step by step on a rope supposedly he saw him with 600 wings so how he tadalla then we continue it says here <clears throat> uh kalavau you want to debunk me are you a muslim kalavau are you a muslim my friend if you are a muslim i can let you call me give me yes and i will open my skype the guy who said he wanted to debunk me
Don't play dead on me now. What? You want to call me or what? The second we mention their name, they stop moving. <laughs> Siko Latte. Well, obviously, you must be a shake. Your name is Siko. <laughs> okay, let me let me log in Skype. Give me a second, please. <coughs> <coughs> All right, my friend, if you are in Skype, Mr. Siko, where are you? You did not, you did not contact me. Um, I don't see any Siko there. Thank you, thank you, team. Siko Latta. I see no Siko, I see no Latta. Let me search for you, maybe I can find. Okay. Is that you? I sent you hi. Answer, please. Uh, this uh, Muhammad and he said he can debunk me. So we will see if that work. Uh, by the way, all the Muslims can debunk me so easy. Answer me. I just uh, I text you in Skype. <clears throat> Hello? I just called you. Yes, my friend. Go ahead. What do you want to say to yeah. us? Hold on. Let me turn on YouTube. <clears throat> there we go. You ran, ran, ran. Let us see who ran. So tell us who is the one who is the one coming down in this verse. Hold on, let me go on YouTube. I debunk your 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 uh, your video, and you can't even respond because you're a coward. This is ultimate truth. Listen, if you are here to call names, you know you are, you are the most stupid kid. You are the one who always say to me stupid things. I show you scholars, you say to me scholars are liars. So if the scars of Islam are liars, why you will not be liar too? You are the one who said to me that, you remember? You said it to me, you said to me all Muslim scholars are liars. So yes. you are you are agreeing that all Muslim scholars are liars. As long as you agreed and you witness that. that all Muslim scholars are liars, so you are a liar too. Aren't you scholar too? Aren't you scholar? I said, you won't let me talk. You see what you're doing? <laughs> because you're running away. Right, right, right. Because you're a coward. That's it. The you, you the coward, the coward right your, is your prophet. Just listen to me. Okay, answer. Go ahead. I said, I said, any scholar mm. that contradicts the word of Allah, I'm not taking it. That's a lie. Mm. It's simple as that. Allah what, what is that mean? What, what, is, what, what does God. that mean? What do you mean? I, 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 hold on, hold on. I, I don't understand. No, no, Let explain me. to me. Explain to me. What do you mean by what you said? Repeat again what you said. I said, any scholar, mm. I don't care who you are, mm. if you contradict the word of my book, the mm. Quran, mm. you are garbage. Mm. I said it. ultimate truth says okay. So. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. The scholars, the scholar says, okay, hold on. The scholar says that the muta is abrogated. The Quran says no. Which one you follow? Muta is is legal marriage. Muta mm. Allah said for mm. in khiftum Allah toksutu filiatama fanki who me thank you uh, 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 whatever you call it. You don't know muta. how to say it. Now say it, say it. No, 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 I want to hear it from you. 
What what? Say Utah it. Utah is marriage. No no no. Say it. You said one kihu. Why why you stop? You don't know how to say it. Correct. I said fun kihu. Ma taaba lakum min nisa. Okay so okay okay. Okay okay. Okay but but you but you idiot. This is not the muta. You donkey. You donkey. This is not the verse for the muta. What does have to do? You eat. You you donkey. What does verse have to do with the muta? That's why I ask you to continue. I ask you about the muta. You answer me about to marry. What what? Where is where is the verse for the muta? This is not the verse for the muta. Do you know which one is the verse for the muta? I said thank you. What this one? What does have to do with the verse? I ask you about this verse is not about the muta. I said the scholar they say the muta is abrogated. Then you I start said, quoting for me this it. verse, which have nothing to do with the muta. Do you know what verse about talking about the muta? Muta is marriage. Which verse is speaking about the muta? Are you searching Google? Oh, I'm not searching Google. I mean, so which verse? So which which, which verse is speak, which verse is which, speak about the muta? Which verse says that? Which verse in your Bible? <laughs> says, <laughs> what does Bible have to do with? I'm asking you, which verse in the Quran speak about the muta? You suppose you are answering me about the muta? Which verse? The is that? I can call you one thousand verses. Which, verse, you, which, you, which, you, verse, which, well, which well, verse in the Quran well, speak about the muta? Which verse in the Bible says that Simon of Cyrene <laughs> carried the cross? <laughs> you see why I block you? You are you are just a kid. So yes. you call me and you, you said you want to debunk me, uh, and you said, you "Look, look how everybody, everybody is laughing at you." You said, "If any yes, scholars absolutely. disagree with the Quran, I say to him he's a liar." All the Muslims yes. say that the muta is abrogated, and now you are. I ask you, is that true? You quote for me a verse which have nothing to do with the muta to refute me about the muta. Let, listen, listen. Is the muta abrogated? Yes or no? I listened the f that that debate happened because I debunked. Is the muta is the muta abrogated or is the muta is abrogated or not? When I said that, are you going to answer or not? Is the muta abrogated? Is the muta abrogated or not? You will not answer, right? You are man. Let me talk. We will never talk. You are here just to shout donkey. You don't even know where is the verse located. This is chapter 4, verse 24, you donkey. Anything contradict the Quran, I don't accept it. Anything. And even, by the way, the verses we're talking about, it's not contradicting the Quran. But because we got him busted and he cry and start saying, oh, those, those scholars are liars. <laughs> Get lost. We need a man to talk to us, not somebody want to shout and scream and call names. And supposedly he called me to debunk me about what about this now? He did not debunk me about what he said. He did not debunk me about this. Coward, like your prophet. <clears throat> Anything is embarrassing, they say we refuse. We show them Ibn Kathir, we refuse. al Qurtubi, we refuse. Okay, a Jalali, we refuse. Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet, we refuse. A hadith from the Prophet, we refuse. Even the hadith, they refuse. <laughs> and supposedly he would debunk me. What an idiot. Anyway, so here, guys, you see, it says, then he drew high and came down till he was in a distance of two bows, length or even nearer. But how that can be? How an angel, if this is an angel, with two or six hundred wings, and Muhammad he says he blocked the horizon. This is how big he is. How such a huge creature can be close to Muhammad almost maximum of two meters, even nearer. And look here what it says. And then he revealed into his slave which he have revealed how he is oh you don't see my screen sorry how he did reveal to his slave if this is an angel do you see the word slave so he came in the horizon and hadith says that he blocked the horizon this is how big he is then he drew down like a monkey. He did not fly. He tadalla. And then until he is in a distance of almost two meter. And then he revealed into his slave 
how Muhammad became a slave of Jibreel all the Muslims they say or let us say the majority that this verse is speaking about Jibreel coming down some Muslims just to be uh, like uh, uh, accurate some Muslim scholars they say no it was Allah But the major number of the Muslims they say this is what Jibreel. But how Jibreel became the God of Muhammad. And if this is Allah, you see here there's a problem. Here it says that he revealed after he came down, he came nearer, 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 until he is two meter away, and then he revealed to his slave. Okay. If this is Jibreel, that means Jibreel is God. Because the verse con contained two things proving that the one here is God. In the same time, the verse contained many things prove that this one here is cannot be God. Why? If you go up, it says that he inspired inspiration, but Muhammad never rece received inspiration. An inspiration is not somebody speak to me. Is that correct? An inspiration is God inspire me within my head. Not somebody speaking to me. If somebody spoke to me, that is a revelation and delivery, like deliver something to me. Revelation can be inspiration if I receive it within my like in my thinking from God, like He inspire me. But if it is a delivery, if God speak to me or an angel, this is not an inspiration no more. Do we agree, guys? So if it is inspiration, then who is the one deliver it? And why why would it deliver anyone any any like any way? It's delivery. Either we have delivery or we have inspiration. This is a contradiction. Contradiction number two. The one who told him is the one with mighty power. How the angel is the one with mighty power. I thought the one who might the one, not one of the mighty power, the one, which means there's only one. So if Jibreel, if the one with mighty power, that's mean he's God. Then he is so strong and he appear he is not anything that must be God and he was in the high horizon and then here you see the, the stupidity suddenly he draw night tadalla which he draw like he, he came down with a rope I don't know what you call it in English if somebody holding a rope and he go down I don't know what the, the exact word to use in English so here you notice that this is cannot be an angel and it cannot be God because God will not come down like a monkey an angel who have 600 wings as Muhammad he can he claim he will not do tadalla uh, are you guys getting my point <clears throat> swing okay swing let us say I don't know if swing is correct one uh, what I'm saying guys that if somebody holding a rope like the one you see in the circus and he is going down the, with the rope that is the word tadalla all right so how he do tadalla if he is an angel slide down maybe sl but not slide exactly tadalla is like is coming down with the rope i don't know how to explain it like more than this you know my my english is not really that uh, uh no not descend not descend because descend it can be it can be an angel he descends from heaven right no, this is not the same because there's a rope. There is a rope. Tadalla. Tadalla is something you are not free. It's not a free jump. It's not a free jump. Okay? To make it simple for you. So when we say Tadalla, like in Arabic, we say uh, uh, there is a, a Dalu. What is a Dalu? It's the container which you tie with the rope and put it in the well of the water and then you grab the water with it. So you when you, you, when you send it down, that is Tadalla. And we call that container a delu. All right. So I don't know what you will what you will make it in English, but I'm sure you got my point. So if this is an angel, angel have six hundred wings, and you do not need to do the dalla as the verse in Arabic says. Thumma dana, fatadalla. And here you will see something very more stupid because it says he draw down. Or sorry, he draw close and then he draw or he he went down in the rope or something like that. But how he came down first? How he came down first and then he went down by the rope? That's silly. Then it says he became so close. How this angel who have six hundred wings, 
who blocked the horizon <coughs> can be close to Muhammad in the middle of Mecca and nobody see him or even if you are close to Mecca or even if you are 70 miles away from Mecca a person who is so huge with 600 wings and he blocked the horizon <clears throat> you see it if you see here in the hadith it says I ask uh, uh, etc etc uh, al Hubaysh about the words of Allah the might the mighty the great so he was at the distance of two bows two bows on near ear and this is the Quran he said Ibn Mas'ud informed him that's verily the Apostle of Allah said that this is Jibreel and he had 600 wings now imagine a creature who have 600 wings who block uh, uh, the horizon he can get it close to Muhammad in a distance of two meter and yet nobody see and nobody witness and nobody even find anything any details about this angel who so huge same time how an uh, a creature who have 600 wings he is going down at the rope so what the wings for You see it? I'm not going. <coughs> I'm not going to ask how Muhammad count the six hundred wings. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the angel he have like a sticker. It says six hundred wings. You know, sometimes like you buy a computer, it says the details. You know, maybe he have a sticker in his back or something. It says like this is four gigabyte. Uh, you know, RAM and uh, uh, the screen is etc. The, um, the processor etc. You know, they, all the information is like you know. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, it's possible it's possible everything is possible in Islam uh, and here we notice <clears throat> Aisha she said that Muhammad he never saw Allah he saw Jibreel only twice read careful with me Aisha, she said, whoever informed you that the messenger of Allah saw his Lord, which means saw Allah, uh, concealed something he was ordered with or ordered with, he know the five things about which Allah has more side. I mean, stupid translation. With him, the knowledge of the hour is blah 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 blah, and then he she said, rather he, the one who says to you that he saw Allah, he lie, he's a liar, rather he saw Jibril, but he did not see him in his real image except two times. One, next to the tree of Allah, in the heaven, and he have six hundred wings. And one when he filled the horizon. Do you see it says filled the horizon? So how big Jibreel is? It's so huge. To the point he filled the horizon. Okay. How somebody he filled the horizon by his size. He can be close to Muhammad two meter distance. To, to, to make it simple for you. If somebody is in the size of the horizon, you are for him is in the size of less than a mosquito. Is that correct? G guys, you understand me? If someone is in the size of the horizon, that's mean you are for him nothing but a mosquito, even less. So when you get so close to such a creature, what, what do you see? You see his toes? What do you see exactly? <laughs> How he get close to him? Such a huge creature 
even if he sleep in the ground Muhammad will not even see his nose will not even see his lips will not even see his chin so how he's so big he filled the horizon and he is so close to Muhammad if it's you are so close to a big object you see nothing you see I can see the mountain as a mountain if I am not in the mountain but I am if I am in the step from the mountain I still don't see the tails of the mountains because it's so huge I have to step away the same as I'm, I'm looking at the moon if I'm so close to the moon like now I'm so close to the earth actually I am in the earth and that's why I don't see much I see just a little territory around me the more I go farther from the earth the more I see so how he is two meter away how that can be then you will notice here <clears throat> don't open any website guys be careful be careful people they post bad website this is like a, a hacking website so the whole story does not make sense then we go We go back to the verse and then here it says he revealed into his slave what he revealed so how he revealed and yet you say here it's inspiration you see the stupidity revealing is not inspiration because supposedly he taught Muhammad he taught him he even says words to him and Muhammad he just repeated which means the teaching here is not really teaching it's just a pronouncing something in front of you and you go and say it so the whole chapter is a stupid and then it says and verily he saw him yet another time look what the Quran confirmed to us the Quran confirmed that Muhammad he saw Jibreel only twice If this is Jibreel how that can be that's mean Muhammad should have only two delivery from Jibreel are you are you following with me guys he saw him the second time he saw him yet another time one more time and in here by the way it doesn't even the translation of Muslims always is a lie because in Arabic it says he saw him when he came down came down not uh, you know not and look here the twin direction he says and then after that in the Sadrat al-Muntaha how he came down he saw him in the second down and then he saw him by the lotter tree but the lotter tree in the seventh heaven it's not in the down If we change the translator, let us let us see. <clears throat> this donkey, donkey is Victor. Let's change the donkey to different donkey. <clears throat> hmm. All right. Look, guys. Look what it says. Read carefully and love. And indeed, Muhammad he saw him. Between two brackets, Jibreel, because nowhere in the Quran it says this is Jibreel. A second descent. Do you see it says second descent? Okay. How it is second descent, and he saw him where? Near the tree of Allah. I mean, this is crazy. Near the tree of Allah, Jibreel cannot descend. Jibreel, he climbed up because the tree of Allah is the highest place where Jibreel can reach. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me let me let me draw for you so you can understand a little bit. <clears throat> According to Muhammad, there is seven heavens. So Muhammad was in the earth. Jibreel he came and he take him from the earth. Let us say, let us make it brown. Brown. This is the earth. 
this is our earth and then Jibreel he took him to the second heaven to the first heaven sorry second third fourth fifth six and here there is a tree when he arrived at the seven and this tree is the tree of Allah and you can travel under this tree for one one hundred year just one branch of it this is how big it is so it's a huge huge tree all right and by the way the the fruit of this tree is jewelry is uh, watches clothes ju uh, you know shoes big big huge tree okay like if you can get from it uh, women women it, uh, this is the fruit of the trees there is a lot of things everything you want it's like a, a big mole of a fruit of everything you want <clears throat> but here it says that he saw him at Surat al Muntaha. But it says in the verse before it, he went down, he descend. How he descend up? I mean, how he say descend? Descend down. When in fact he saw him here. And this is the maximum point he can go to. Are you guys, uh, do you understand what I'm saying? This is the maximum he can reach. After this point, Jibreel, he cannot go. Muhammad only, he went by himself. And this is told by Muhammad. Muhammad, he told him, when he arrived to Surat al-Muntaha, Jibreel, he cannot walk with him no more. So how it says descent? Descent is to come down. So how he, the second time he saw him, when he descend, and he saw him next to Surat al-Muntaha, but this is not where he saw him. Because if if Muhammad saw Jibreel next to Surat al-Muntaha, that's mean Muhammad he live here, <laughs> and the angel descend down to here. <laughs> hey guys, be careful with those. Uh, you know, like we have today, look like we have an invasion today. Be careful from those website. Those are uh, uh, supposedly they are sex website, but when you go there, they hack you. They have a Trojan horse will go into your computer. So never open them. All right, be careful. Only foolish people they open them. You can open them in your, you know, your own responsibility, and that's mean you are a fool. Uh, <clears throat> so, the whole story is a stupid story, and look what it says in the verse after it. It says he saw him where he saw him near the paradise of the uh, the uh, uh, the, uh, the abode <laughs> how he saw him there so the angel he's descend down to muhammad in that heaven i thought jibreel he went with him from the earth he came with a donkey white donkey it's a mule between donkey and a horse a huge white have a bracelet sexy donkey and muhammad he ride on the top of him but here it says he he saw him next to the tree of Allah in the heaven of refuge all the story is stupid and then it says look at this when that covered the lotus tree which he which did covered what does that mean what does that mean when that covered the lotus tree which did cover it what does that mean <laughs> Unbelievable, so beautiful, huh? <coughs> and then suddenly, just to show you the stupidity of the Quran, speaking about angel or Allah coming down, suddenly he says, Did you see a lot and Uzza? What does this have to do with this? What all the chapter before have to do suddenly with the three daughters of Allah you know what I'm saying guys it's like I'm saying to you I was making hummus and I was uh, making falafel and then I made salad and then did you see a little uzza what does this have to do with this what is the connection
I think that the one who wrote the Quran is ultimate truth. <laughs> what is the connection? There's no connection. And this is why when the Muslim they say, Oh, why you read the, you don't read the verses before it or the verse after it? I say you made me laugh because there's no connection in the Quran between verses and verses. And here we reach to did you see a lat al uzza? Okay, what about it? And look what about it. Allah have a complaint. He says, What for you the male and for him the female? What? Allah the Almighty complaining, saying to the Arab, like hello, for Allah you give daughters, for you you have sons. This is for sure indeed an uh, unfair division. <laughs> this is like two old women from the from the cave time centuries fighting each other about hey hey I have boys you don't have boys. The other woman she says. Well, this is not fair. So what if you have boys? This is not fair. You have boys and I have daughters. This is not fair. What is this? This is my grandma in the 16th centuries, uh, maybe speaking, saying it's not unfair to have only uh, daughters. Allah the Almighty. Why he don't like that? And, and the funny they say to you, the Muslim they say to you, and there's a verse in the Quran says that when the Arab they see, they have, they hear the news that they have a daughter, they get upset. But as you see, it's Allah who upset. <laughs> For Allah, obviously, is an Arab God. Otherwise, why you are why you are saying it's unfair? For you, the male, and for me, the female? And here you notice how this verse get the lies of the Muhammadan when they say that the Arab used to disrespect females. Even they used to kill them. How they used to respect them, but they made them goddess. Correct? How somebody disrespect women, but he worship a female. And why Allah is always is a he, and why it cannot be she, and why Allah cannot have daughters, and why it is indeed unfair, Allah explained, he says, what? For you, the male, and for him, the females, this is for sure, indeed, unfair division. So what is the problem? The problem is, you gave the male for yourself, you give me the female. That is unfair. However, after we read all this chapter, what we learned? Did we learn anything? Muslims, what is the wisdom of this? What is this? What what we learn from this? What this will help me with my life? When I say a religion, a religion is supposed to guide me for something. What is this? Hmm? Do we have any Muslim want to say something to us? <coughs> Fadi saying maybe Allah is mocking the pagan religion, but this, but He is not mocking them. Actually, He is He is saying they are better than Him, because as you see, the pagan, they are taking females as God. And Allah saying that it is wrong to take females as God. That's mean Allah He decide, decided that the one who should be worshipped must be always a male. And He is complaining it's unjust that for them, the, fem for, uh, the, the boys, they have sons, and yet for God they have females. Look here what you notice with me. Allah have only three daughters. He don't have a son. Correct? Three daughters. No son.
and that is the complaint of Allah secondly if you go to different verse in the Quran you will see how much Allah he don't like females the Arab even they have angels who they are females in chapter 4 verse 117 it says they are worshiping females instead of Allah those who they worship they are females so Allah proving that they are not God because they are females what what does have to do what does that mean then if we go into the front verse uh, we will find this <clears throat> Chapter 37, verse number 150. Or created we the angels female, they were present. He's saying, Did we create angels really are female? Allah did not. So angels are must be male. So Jibreel is a male. <laughs> you see, if this if the angels cannot be females, that means the angels are males. That is a stupid answer because the angels they are not neither male or female. What male and female? What is that? Now ask the Muhammad, has they lord daughters where where is they have sons? Like what? Their lord have daughters and they have sons? But who how stupid this is statement? Because the Arab they have daughters too. Have you ever heard Arab they have only sons? Because if we have only sons, we don't have daughters, then we will die. And where my mother is coming from? <laughs> she was imported from Napoli in Italy. What do you mean? This is stupid. They have sons and they have daughters. The Arab, they don't have sons only. So as you see here, the stupidity is amazing. And then say, oh, did we create the angels are females? Now he is mixing things up. Once he speak about the daughters of Allah, who they are females, and then he speak about angels who they are daughters, or they are females. And then, <clears throat> look at this. Lu, it is their falsehood that they say Allah has begotten Allah verily, they tell a lie. And again of their falsehood, he has preferred daughters to son. Here you notice that the Arab, they respect more females to the point the Quran saying that they say that the Allah, he preferred the daughters. Do you notice? Know do you see? This is what the Arab believe. Allah don't believe in that, which means Muhammad. So if you go back in the history of the Arab, you will see the women, they used to be having, a, you see, the Arab before Islam, they used to be a very uh, one billion time healthy society from after Islam. Look at this. Don't the Muslim, they say around the Kaaba, there was more than 360 uh, uh, idol. Is that correct? Don't they say that? 360 pagan God? Do you know what does that mean? That means this is a society of a free speech. Do we agree? And nobody is killing anybody. And nobody is fighting anyone. 360 gods exist in one location. Nobody killing. Nobody slaughtering. Nobody hating anyone. Everyone speak for his God and all live in peace. That is before the cult of Islam. So Arab before Islam is a billion times better than democracy we have today. Today, if you go speak against Islam in Europe, they say to you, you have Islamophobia. In Europe. In Arabia, no. You can speak as you wish. You can worship as you wish. You can follow the God you wish, and nobody have a problem with you.
No, Muhammad never married in a church, and in Mecca there is no church. Muhammad he married from a woman. She is her name is Khadija, and she is no Christian. This is a false information you got. Khadija is a Nasara, and Nasara are the same as Jehovah's Witnesses. <coughs> is a cult. And Muhammad, the real father of Muhammad, is Waraq ibn Nawfal. This is why if you have my book, The Deception of Allah, you will find that Waraq, he sent his sister, according to Muslim books, and Muslim reference, as you see in my books, he sent his sister to offer the father of Muhammad, which I believe his real name is Abdullah, not Abdullah. She offered him 100 camel, so he go sleep with her. He was in his way to sleep with the mother of Muhammad, supposedly. The father of Muhammad, he says, I'm going to go to Amina and I will go back to you. When he went and he slept with Amina and he came back to her, she said, I have no need of you no more. So it looked like uh, Waraq ibn Ufad, he was trying to take this man away from this woman so because he is sleeping with her already. And then after that, you will see that each time Muhammad is missing, we find him with Waraqa. And not only that, the hadith confirm that even when Waraka he died, Muhammad he tried to commit suicide. And that is telling you how much is the impact of Waraka on Muhammad's life. I mean, why a man he is supposedly a prophet of God, he would try to commit suicide for a death of a man. The death of this man was very crucial for Muhammad because he is the one was supplying him with the Quran he is his real father and he is the one was preparing him to take over his job as a bishop or a priest for the cult of Nasara so Muhammad was not in the beginning really to be a prophet as much he was preparing prepared to take over the job of his father Waraq ibn Nufar. and here you will see that the first one who told Muhammad that you are a prophet it was Waraka, the one who told Muhammad what is the name of the angel he saw, it was Waraka. Waraka said, This is the same as the Nemos, i.e., Jibreel, the angel who keeps the secret whom Allah had sent to Moses. So that was the idea of Waraka. Muhammad, at this moment, he didn't know who is this guy who saw him. So imagine. Muhammad he saw the angel the angel spoke to Muhammad the angel he was scared because of the of the angel and yet Muhammad until now he did not know who is this he go to a guy his name is Waraka and yet right away this Waraka says to him oh this is an angel and then when Waraka die uh, Muhammad he try after a few days Waraka died and the divine inspiration was also posed. And here you notice the connection between Quran and Waraka. Waraka, he died, there's no Quran. And this is why Muhammad was so desperate because now what he would do? His father, the real father, is dead. Quran, no Quran, is posed because Waraka is dead. So what he would do? So he tried, he becomes so sad, and he tried many, many times to throw himself from the top of the high mountain. All right. What do you think? No, Rahib Buhaira is just another uh, another uh, uh, Nasara, a priest. Uh, you know. The real, the real one behind Muhammad is Waraka, I believe. This is according to my study. You know, I, uh, I did not see too much impact of Buhaira. Buhaira, maybe he was the teacher of the father of Muhammad. Uh, let us say he's older than Waraka. <coughs> Waraka, he learned from Buhaira, and Buhaira was the master of Waraka, and then Waraka, he taught Muhammad, and etc.
So just to make it simple about what we learned today, in the Bible there is no name for God. There is no name. And the reason is very simple. Because there is no name to I can't describe him. There is no name can contain him. We don't have a name. And why God should shall have a name? You see, usually you give a name to someone because there's many of him. We want to recognize him from between many, correct? No, Yahweh is not a name. Yahweh is not a name. That's not true. That's not true. You see, the, the, the problem is because we don't speak the language, we think it's a name. So if I say, he said, I, I am Yahweh, you think he is saying this is name because for you it's a foreign word. But the fact this is not a name, this is just a word mean I am. All right? But because for you it's a foreign language, you think it's a name. I will give you an example. The Muslims, they have the same problem too. And many Christians who they are not very well versed, they think the same way. In the Quran, <clears throat> uh, we find a verse where it says, Abraham, he said to his father, Azar. Remember when Abraham said into his father, Azar. The Muslims enter now, they think that Azar is a word which is the name of the father of Abraham. But all of us, we knew that this is stupid. This is an error. cannot be. Azar, Azar is not the name of the father of Abraham. So what is that? But because the Quran is a theft, and the one who is making the Quran, he knew Aramaic. So he said, when Abraham, he said to in his father, Azar, is that like somebody today now saying, he said to him, okay. Now, okay, I say okay, even it's not my Arabic, it might, it's not Arabic. Like if I go right now in Egypt and I say okay, people will understand what okay mean. But if you say a word which is strange for the society you live in, then they will think it's a name. Uh, are you getting my point? So what, what uh, the author of the Quran, whoever he is, he said that Abraham said to his father, foolish, as I mean foolish. Not the name of the father of Abraham, but because the ignorant Muslims they do not know what Azar mean, they thought this is his name. So it's a foreign word, they don't know what it is, and they look okay, his father Azar. So okay, he's saying to him, You he's saying, Have you ever heard of somebody saying to his father his name? This is disrespect. You don't call your father by his name. But what Abraham saying to his father, this is foolish. Worshipping idols as gods that makes sense, correct? That make perfect sense Not his name So many Christians they do the same They think that Yahweh is, is a name. This is not a name. There's no name for God in the whole Bible from the first letter to the last letter we can call them names as like a foreign word what God he said about himself, but in fact they are not. Like I say, Elohim, Adonai, you know, there is many, Hashem, but those are not names. Those just words about God. All right? Now, do we have any Muslim want to say something? Any Muhammadan have something to say? Anyway, just a reminder if uh, people they like to have a, a halal pork, you know, we have we are going to import soon halal pork for those who they are interested. I don't know how many of you are interested in halal pork. Somebody today sent me this picture actually from Germany in the store. It says halal pork. 
Williams. What the hell? What's wrong with people? So if you want to buy really halal pork and you are a Muslim, please contact me. Okay, I know the store. We know the name. We can make a deal and we can let us make uh, some money. Halal pork. I'm serious. This is in the store. This is a picture in the store. This is sujas. It's made from pork. And it is halal. So, hello? Did I tell you this story? When I was in the army, we used to have a, like a, there's a guy who's a Muslim, he's a civilian. Because I'm an Arab, he speak Arabic, so he go with me during lunchtime. And almost like six months he go with me when I go for lunch. Uh, when we go to the restaurant, you know, he order, I order. He asked the waiter or waitress, do you have uh, 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 halal uh, pork? She laugh, you know, yeah, sure. You know, they give him whatever. Okay, I want this. What is this and this and this? Okay. So after like six months, we are eating together in the restaurant. This is the only restaurant we have close to us. Uh, one day he asked me in Arabic, what are you eating? So I, I said uh, in Arabic, I said, khanzir, which means pork. He said, what? Are you serious? You are eating khanzir? Yuck, man. Stupid idiot. What's wrong with you? You are eating khanzir for the last six months too. He said, me? He said, yeah. Are you serious? He said, yeah. What, what are you talking about? I never eat khanzir. I said, Ain't you, as, now, now you are eating khanzir. Isn't you every day come here and now just order halal pork? He said, yeah. He said, do you know what pork mean? He said, uh, meat. I said, no. Pork mean khanzir, you idiot. So this stupid, his English is not good. He thinks that pork is a meat. So he's asking him, do you have halal meat? And he was eating for six months halal pork, thinking that he is ordering halal meat. You should see his face, what happened to him when he... But this is now for real, halal pork. Oh, by the way, we have a limited supply, so if you want to make an order, please let us know. Uh, this is in France? France, okay, this is in French. I don't know if this is French or not. All right, but uh, somebody sent it to me actually from Germany. Somebody saying this is in French. How do you know it's in the French? Because this is how they say pork in the French? I'm not sure. <clears throat> hey, no, my my friend, I don't care what the scholar they say. There is nowhere in the Bible it is speaking about name of God. It is just a description of God. This is what Moses says to him, to uh, uh, to God. What I will tell my people, who are you? Right. If you go to Exodus chapter three, go and read from thirteen to fifteen, you will see it says, and uh, uh, Elohim says to him, uh, to Moshe, uh, yah asher, yah, which means I am who I am. And this is not a name. This is I am who I am. Now, you want to use it as a name because it's a foreign language for you. But every Jew he knew that this is not a name. But they use it because this is how God he described himself as Yahweh. All right. But this is not a name. I mean, it's very simple to understand what scholars. You don't need a scholar to understand this. Ask him, what does that mean? They will say to you, I am who I am. So have you ever heard of a name? It's called it's called I am who I am. <laughs> That's not a name. Always, in order to uh, to uh, to read something or to understand something, read the question and then read the answer. What Moshe he said to them? He said into Elohim, Hinai, when I came into uh, uh, Binai, you, uh, uh, you Israel, uh, like what I, I what I shall say to them. Elohim, he answered him saying uh, to me to Moshe, Eheya, 
Ashir Ehe, Yah, I am who I am. As simple as that. All the names in the Bible are not names. Adam is not a name. The sons of Adams are not names. All of those are a statement. It's a coding. It's an amazing book. Adam. Go and read the names of Adam and all the names after it. We call Adam a name, but the fact is not. Adam is just a man. And actually, even the Bible used Adam for, for Eve too. Which mean a human so you will notice all those names are not names but for us because it's a foreign language we think they are name and they are used as names but in fact they are not the same as the word Jesus the same as the word uh, Christ the same the same as the word Gabriel the same as the word the word Ishmael they are not named Abraham is not a name Abraham is the one who crossed the river, crossed from the other side. Av Abraham. So you will notice that those names are a story. It's not just a name. Abraham is a given name for the one who left the side of the pagan because his family were pagan. So he crossed the river and he, he left his pagan family to follow God. This is why his name is Abraham. Same as Moshe. Moshe is not a name or Musa's. It is the one who sort of survived from drowning in water. Are we are we listening? No, not all the names in the Bible have meaning. All the all the names in the Bible is a statement, not a meaning. It's an it's a statement, it's a statement of a of a situation. Jibril, Israel, you know, Israel, Gabriel, all, all this, this is not a name, <laughs> but we can use them as a name because this is what they called by, right? But in fact, it is a statement of position, situation, description. <clears throat> they are a statement. They are an announcement. Yeah, it is his name, but this is a name given to him to describe what happened to him. But it's not a name. You see, we call him Musa, so this is a name. In the same time, it's not just a name. It is a storytelling. See, the Bible is not like the stupid book of the Quran. Every statement there is a deep story. There is a there is a video. <clears throat> uh, let me see if I can find it for you. There's another place that God appears to have laid out his plan in advance and that's in some subtleties and one of which I'd like to share with you in Genesis chapter 5 a genealogy the genealogy in Genesis chapter 5 goes from Adam the first man down through Noah and in Genesis chapter 5 if you wade through that I encourage you to make a list of the names Adam gives uh, gave birth to Seth, Seth Enosh, Enosh Kenan, Kenan Mahalal, Mahalal Jared, Jared Enoch, Enoch Methuselah, Methuselah Lamech, and Lamech was the father of Noah. Let's take these names, ten names. But see, the problem is we need to know what the names mean. And if you have a study Bible or a source, a, a, a lexicon, what have you, you know that the name Adam means man. As you go through your Bible, when these names are typically first introduced, most of your marginal footnotes will tell you what the name means. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means sorrow. Mahalel means the blessed God. 
Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. And the word Noah means rest or comfort. Now, let's read that genealogy as a sentence. Man is appointed mortal sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching that his death shall bring the despairing comfort. Isn't that wild? All right. So you notice here that those who they are, we thought they are names. There's another place. In fact, they are not names. They are telling a story, yet they are names. But like, imagine why somebody want to call himself, his, his son, his death. <laughs> I mean, do you call your son his death? You know what I mean? And this is telling you that it is not just an like an incident or by accident they call those names. Those names are inspired even by God. It's a secret message from God. Even they say to you, where is Jesus mentioned in the Old Testament? Where is the death of Jesus will save us? Here we go. Even the names of the sons of Adam all the way to Noah is telling about the story of the coming of the God on earth and his death will bring comfort to mankind but because of our ignorance and most you know people do not speak the language so we think that those are names but in fact they are story you call your son sorrow you call your son the blessed God you call him shall come down that's strange, right? You call your son Enoch teaching? His death shall bring? What kind of name is that name? The despairing? The comfort? But you put the names together, you will find that this is a story. So, you know, either we take the, the Bible words in a shallow way and we take the outside meaning or we go deep and study and we try to find what is the message. This is the book of, of God. It's a book of message, not a book of names. All right. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim want to say something to us? Islam means false? No, the real name of Islam or the word Islam means to surrender. It means to surrender. Actually, you know, all, all the names we have around us is images, you know. Our brain is the same as a computer, and every word is connected to an image. So when I say to you, chair, right away your brain translates to you what a chair is. Otherwise, chair is not a name for the thing, it's description. Do we agree? It's not a name. You don't name it a chair. This is not a name. This is an image. Of something have four legs whatever you sit in it and we call it chair table bed so you, it might sound like an or a name but in fact it is a description all right so what about the Almighty God who no name can describe him what name can describe God nothing like we say God is love but is that what describe God? No, that describes something about God. Something very important. But this is not just everything. <clears throat> Almighty. This is not just this is not a name. 
but he's almighty <clears throat> do we have any Muslim would like to call us uh, any verse in the Quran where the right hand possess what if there is any verse in the Quran where the right hand process is forbidden for this day and this time no that's false no we are in Quran and this is why the only ones who is did not if they fought a slavery uh, law which is United Nations law is the Muslims until now Mauritania more than 80% of population are slaves Why the Christians pray to the person to one person of the Godhead only Jesus or the Father? Quran talks about la alla ba'dahum ala ba'd. I don't know what do you mean for us when we pray to Jesus or pray to the Father is the same. Jesus said, The one who saw me, he saw the Father. Right? And when when Jesus was with us on the earth, we pray to the Father because Jesus is with us already. So Jesus says, pray like this, say, our Father out of heaven. But the one who saw Jesus, he saw the Father. And he said, I am and the Father is one. Right? Uh, a Muslim might ask, okay, why Jesus did not speak about praying to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is with Jesus. Even the Quran says, And we support him with the Holy Spirit. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Anything useful to defend Islam? Yeah, a Muslim might say to you, well, why Jesus said to pray to the Father? He didn't say pray to the Holy Spirit. Isn't it the Trinity? Well, isn't it, isn't it even the Quran says that the Messiah, he was sponsored by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is within him? And the Bible says the same that the, the Holy Spirit is with Jesus. <clears throat> In chapter two, verse number eighty-seven, it says. I remember Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary. We gave him a clear sign, etc. And we supported him by a Ruh Al-Qudus, the Holy Spirit. And then they put between two bracket Jibri. That's stupid stories of Muslims because Muslims do not know. As we said, those are foreign names for them. They do not know what they are. So the Edith Muhammad, he mixed between the Holy Spirit and the, and the angel Jibri. So according to the Quran, but by the way here, you notice something very stupid. Anyone notice with me? Why the Quran is saying that Isa, every prophet we gave him a sign. And the sign of Isa, we support him by the Holy Spirit. And then the Muslim, they say the Holy Spirit is Jibreel. Okay, but if the sign of Isa was a special, which is the Holy Spirit, would Muhammad have a Holy Spirit too? According to, to, to the Muslim, they say Jibreel. If this is Jibreel, that's mean this is not a sign for Isa only. Do, do you understand, guys? Is it something unique to Isa or for everybody? The verse saying that this is something unique to Isa only. And what is the unique? The, the Holy Spirit. A Ruh al Qudus means the Holy Spirit. Between two brackets, the Muslim they are Jibreel. Okay. If this is Jibreel, that's mean all of them they have Holy, Holy Spirit with them. Muhammad, he have it too. This is what's silly about this cult. It's a stupid, silly cult. Like today we have a, we have an invasion of six predators.
Be careful, guys. Don't don't click. Those are hackers, you know, they post links, so you click on them, and then they, 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 they plan a Trojan in your computer, and then they will lock your computer, and they will not be able to open it unless you, you give them a ransom. They do, it, they do it always for donkeys. They are after sex websites. Garbage in, garbage out. Do we have any Muhammad want to say something? Any Muhammad want to say something? Yeah, I will check that uh, later to see. Uh, Okay, let me, I don't know if I can do that right now. Let us go to community. I mean, this is new, you know, we are not usually to see this uh, a filthy post. This is new. I'm going now to you. To the chat block words new comment url review okay here we go i did that now we save it i think now they cannot post no more wonderful there is an option that nobody can post a link without approval of the admins that's wonderful At least temporarily. But I don't know if this is will uh, will uh, take action uh, for an active chat for now. I don't know. We will see. <clears throat> uh, any Muslim? Any Muslim would like to call us? Yes, Mr. Man, Matt, you want to call me? Okay, I get it. You are a Muslim. And do you like to call me? Why Jesus made such a mystery to this, the Trinity where Muhammad made it very clear to worship on God? The fact Jesus never make anything mystery. What mystery? Jesus, he said it clearly, me and the Father is one. It's mystery for the fool. Why it's mystery? The whole Bible says that God is one. From the first verse to the last verse. Now, if God, he is in a three person, that is not mystery. He told you that. If you go to the book of Genesis, from the first verse, verse number one, chapter one, verse number one, two, three, read. It says God created everything and his spirit was above the water. His spirit from the beginning. There's nothing created yet. So if you decide to say it is a, it is a mystery because you decide to make it a mystery, not because it's a mystery. All the Bible speak about God and the Spirit of God and and then God himself he came as a man to Abraham and then Jesus says Abraham he saw my day so what Jesus is talking about how Abraham he saw his day and even the Jews they said to him how Abraham he saw your day you're not even 50 years old So always, my friend, mystery is for those who decide to make it a mystery. The Trinity is nothing but how God is. Why it is very hard to understand. You know, if God, he says to us, I am 1,000 person. Do you want God to be the way you want him to be? I am one in the same time. I am 1,000 person. 
otherwise why you call him almighty so almighty is he limited to a, to a design you want or to the way he is what the Muslim they want they want a design as they wish a God as they wish not a God as he is If you go in the hadith, you will see that Allah Himself He come to the Muslims after He changed His shape, and what the Muslim they say they kick His ass because they don't like His shape. <laughs> you Muslims, you kick the ass of Allah Himself. Why? Because He changed His shape. So you Muslims, you want a God as you design, not as He is. Right, so if Allah did not come to you in a shape which you wish, you will say to him, You are not Allah, but this is Allah, the same Allah. What happened? So, what we learn from this if Allah did not come to you in a picture which you like, you refuse him. I don't know what you mean by I'm not sure what do you mean. You know, you keep repeating this thing, I don't think you understand what you are posting. This is in the chapter of Al Mu'minun, verse number 91. But what does this have to do with us? That actually, uh, that's a very stupid statement. If we go to the verse you are posting, and this is one of the reasons I see the Quran is a very silly book. <clears throat> It says, uh, the translation here is not really accurate. What did Allah do with the man? What did he do with the man? He did not have any one of them with the man. Subhanallah, what did he do with the Let me show you how stupid this, this statement uh, Fadi, remember, you are the one who chose this verse, not me. So don't blame me for the stupidity is coming. Allah, he did not uh, took an offspring, but did God the, of the Christian, he took an offspring? He took? He took from where? What he took? <laughs> Secondly, it says here, it's here in the translation, it says begot, but in Arabic, it doesn't say begot, it says he took, he took. Then it says, nor there is any uh, uh, God Beside him, okay. How he is the one is talking, he says, Beside him, you should say, Beside I. This is again proof that the Quran is made by a guy speaking in a third person, always. And then he says, Behold, each God would have taken away what he had created. Well, isn't it Jesus in the Quran? He created from the mother birds. So, what, what we would what we would do now if there's many gods. And every God, he will take what he created. And the Quran is saying that those, if there is gods who created others, they will take their creation. Okay, well, the Quran confirmed that there's other, other creators. Isn't it the Quran said that Allah is the best of the creators? The Quran, obviously, is a stupid book. If this verse means that there is only one creator, and the one who take who make a creation, he will take his creation, he will be responsible for his creation. So the Quran, when he says in chapter 23, verse number 14, praise be to Allah, the best of the creators. It's a stupid statement. Because here we go, he's saying, the one who create, he will take his creation. So if there's many creators, each one of them will take his creation. Okay, who is the other creators? If this is an exaggeration from the Quran, that means the Quran is not a book of God because God should not exaggerate and lie because exaggeration is nothing but a lie. As an example, you say to me, uh, uh, you have rain? Yes, I said, yeah, I have rain. And this, this is storm is the best of the storms, but I say only one storm in all my life. I never saw a storm. I live in a desert. I never saw a rain. I never saw a storm. And I say this is the best of the storms. That means I'm a liar. Because this is the only storm. Are you following uh, Fadi? 
So the verses you are giving me is proving to me that the Quran is a stupid book. Every creator will take his creation. Well, Jesus is a creator. And here we find that Muhammad saying that Allah, supposedly Allah said to him, that Allah is the best of the creators. How Allah can be the best of the creators if there's no other creators? So here either you say Allah is a liar, exaggeration, saying that he is the best, but in fact he's not. The verse talk about the Christians say that Jesus is the son of God, of Allah. No, my friend, you see, again, this is because of your ignorance. This is because of your ignorance. This verse has nothing to do with the Christians. This verse have nothing to do with the Christians. Because the word walad is not about a son. It's about children. And the word walad is very stupid to use because the word walad is about birth in Arabic. You should use the word ibn. The word walad from walida, giving birth. So if you think the word walad is the correct word to, to use, uh, the, the word walad is not equal to son. The word son in Arabic is ibn. Walad is giving birth from your private part. So the statement is stupid. Same time, if you go and take check the word walad, you will see that Allah, he says, we were talking about... Uh, you remember we were talking about the females. <clears throat> All right. We spoke about the, the females in chapter 4, verse number uh, uh, 17. Well, sorry, 117. And then we spoke about the same thing in different verse. Where Allah supposedly he say, let us see, chapter 37, verse 115. Where Allah he says that he don't have, you know, uh, he don't have a female children, okay? And you are worshiping females. So for them, for him, the females, and for him, the banoon, and look here the word Benun, which is sons. The Christian believe in the son, they don't believe in Walad. Now I understand that Walad is used to say, okay, you know, a son, because a human being, you know, is a son. Uh, but but in reality, if you want to go deep in the meaning, that should not be used. Now, if you search for the word Walad in the Quran, you will find it's speaking about the females angels too. <clears throat> Let us see here. Chapter 6, verse number 101. Speaking about Allah don't have a walad. Uh... Chapter 19, verse number 35, speaking about Walad. Chapter 23, verse number 19, speaking about Walad. Uh, chapter 37, verse 152, is speaking about Walad. And chapter uh, 43, 81, is speaking about Walad. But all of them speaking, the Arab, they, they have only three daughters to Allah. They don't believe he have a son. So this was not an answer for the Christians. Same time, just to show you something silly in the Quran. Look what Muhammad he said. He told him, Allah told him supposedly. Okay, Muhammad, if the beneficent, if a Rahman has a son, then you say, you shall say, I shall be the first among the worshiper. So the, this is not about a logic. It's about if he have or not. That's all. Correct? Which means, if you Muslims, if you heard from Muhammad saying that Allah, he have a son, he will worship. It's not about possible, not impossible. And not only this, if Allah have a son, 
that son must be God because it says here you should worship him correct guys okay, do you see it if Allah has a son the Muslims should worship him the son that's mean the son of God must be God too okay so why you Muslim you say where Jesus says I am God worship me isn't it the Bible say the son of God all over isn't it the Bible says Jesus keeps saying my father Your Quran saying, if God has a son, you should be the first to worship. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Uh, somebody asked me about a link for description of paradise in heaven I don't know but there is a website there is a video actually uh, maybe I can give you the link yeah, yeah, uh, somebody saying uh, she searched for a Muslim uh, for a description of paradise in heaven she found only a Muslim website so what read and love and uh, let me show you something there's a video it's called the description of paradise I advise you to watch it it is hilarious let me see if I can find it here we go I advise you actually I advise all of you to download this video and share it with your friends for comedy and actually you know what me myself I'm going to download it here we go I will download it later <laughs> so what the problem if you see it from Muslim websites so, so what love It's even better. It's more legitimate, and nobody will say to you, you are fabricating. I played this video in one of my seminars in the Philippines. People fell in the chair from their chairs in the floor, for sure, because of my comment, too. I was commenting in the video because people don't notice really how stupid until you make a comment. I wish I can play the video for you. You guys, you would die laughing. I will make you literally have a have heart attack. <clears throat> and the one who described the heaven for us is a doctor from Al Azhar University. And the guy in the video, he says to him, Hey, brother, describe for us the heaven of Allah. The guy, he says to him, The heaven of Allah, nobody can describe for you the heaven of Allah. Because nothing like anything we saw and now let me describe for you the heaven of Allah you just said you just told him nobody can describe it he just said nobody can describe the heaven of Allah and then after a second he says okay let me describe for you the heaven of Allah it's a comedy show and then brother in your house brother you have four doors and you enter from one door I enter from one door I'm so glad I did not enter from four doors I mean for sure I will enter from one door how many doors I can use in the same time and brother one door for your servants and one door for your wives and one doors for the angel angel come to you every Friday he knock at your door you say who's this he say I'm a messenger from Allah and then you open the door he give you a card guys watch it watch it just watch it I don't want to bring the movie uh, I don't want to burn the movie for you it's better than 
I mean all the comedy movie ever ever you saw you can uh, install uh, from firebox uh, firefox they have many apps you know go to ads in you know and there's they have just search youtube they have many ads uh, uh, app uh, for uh, to install to download uh, youtube and then after you install it you will see an arrow will appear here so you uh, depend in the app uh, you click in it and then it give you option to download like you choose which higher choose always video mp4 not web Do we have any Muslim? Anyone? Nobody? Any statement in the Quran, it, it you know it, you can you can find how funny it is in easy easy way. The hadith about Muhammad body become a stink, but this is will not find I think in English. Uh, We can find it in Arabic. I don't think in English. <coughs> See, I I have. Uh, I apologize. I'm coughing. Let us see if we can find this in English. But I don't think so. Yeah, that's not. All right, uh, there's many books speaking about Muhammad, his body uh, decay, uh, but we will show some of it. You can use Google translation for the one who asked me because I cannot find you really anything in English. All right. And let us see if we can show you where it says that.
All right, this is the book of Al Maghazi, Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad. It says that the campaign of the Prophet, when Allah when Allah he took the soul of of Allah Messenger, uh, his friends, his companion, they gather together and they said, "Tarabbasu bi Nabiyyikum." لعله أرج به قال فتربصوا به حتى رب بطنه. so they said uh, wait for your prophet maybe maybe Allah will take him up to heaven you know as he is and then they waited for him until his belly his stomach became big with gas when a, when a person he die when a person he die what happened right away uh, his, uh, all the food which is going to be in his stomach uh the bacteria would di would digest it and because now he is dead the gas will stay inside his belly he cannot you know fart normally let us say or get rid of the gas normally so what will happen uh the stomach of this person the belly of this person who is dead his belly will start getting bigger and bigger full of gas and this is exactly what it says all right and this is uh, page number 236. This is page number 237 here. And this is the page before it, 236 in English. All right. I can give you the link, but I don't know if that will be helpful for you because this is in Arabic. And this is Google Books. Oh, it says it cannot go through. I need to shorten the link. Google And you know the the funny is that this is a reference in Islamic website. I mean look at this If it is us making those books the Muslim they will say it's a lie But even when the Muslim they make the books they will say it's a lie <laughs> Those are the scholars of the Muslims. I don't know. The link is it cannot be cannot be shortened. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make a comment under the video because I cannot post it there for some reason. It does not accept. I just made a comment under the video for the link. All right, so you can check it out later. Uh, and there is different book. This book is Tariq Medina to Dimashq. قال البهي وكان النبي ترك يوما وليلة حتى ربى بطنه وانثنت خنصره. So they left the prophet dead without burying him, according to this book here, one day and one night, without burying him. And his belly became so big, and his uh, uh, fingers. Uh, you see, when uh, when a person he die, he he like his fingers as if he is grabbing something, you know. So he described how he is. In different hadith, it says that his and his nails became a green. And let me post this link to you too under. Uh, the video here so we are posting it here for you in the comment because I cannot post it in uh, in the chat there's tons of reference I mean this there is endless reference he stink you know uh, etc another hadith it says uh, Anton, Anton, which means stink. <clears throat> anyway, that, I think that's enough.
Do we have any uh, Muslim want to say something? And even Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad, he said, uh, The Prophet of Allah, he stink, this is after he die, he stink the same as all the human, they stink after they die. And actually, this one should we should find it in Arabic in in the English translation, but I don't know. Let us see. Hmm. I don't think so. However, we can find it here. <clears throat> this is the book of Sunan al-Durami, volume number one. And this is page number 53. 53. It says, فقال, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قد مات. The Messenger of Allah, he passed away. And he is just a human. And وَإِنَّهُ لَيَأْسًا كَمَا يَأْسًا الْبَشَرِ And he stink as all Bashar, as all humans stink. So bury him, it is more honorable for him. Alright? And again, we will post for you the link under the video for the one who asking for reference. But as you see, all those links, all those references are not in English because Muslim will not really translate them. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Muslim have an objection? And by the way here, this is exposed Muhammad to be a liar because Muhammad before he died, he claimed that uh, a prophet of Allah, they don't decay. And this is why the Muslims did not bury him right away because he told them he would not decay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Fadi. Not a hadith, there's many of them. And here actually he claimed that even he, when he is dead, Allah will uh, display all the prayers of the Muslims to him. See? And this is Sahih. Allah has forbidden it, the earth from consuming the bodies of the Prophet. This why they did not bury him. They believed him, I guess. And then they noticed that he's a liar. Any Muhammadan? Actually, this is alone proving Muhammad to be a false prophet. If the Muslim want to see really for five seconds, if Muhammad is a prophet or not, take him from the grave. His grave is in Mecca. Open the grave and let us see if what he said is true. Already is proven not true. You know, the hadith all of it says that he decay. He stink. Anyone who is a Muslim want to say something? Any comment? You guys, what do you think about the timing? I'm doing this video like now. Is it good? I know maybe this is not good for people in Europe. They are still like sleep. But what do you think about the timing? Is it good? <clears throat> Okay. Okay, as long as this is a perfect time to do the video, then I will not do it again. You know, we Arab, we don't like democracy. We ask you what you like, so we do opposite. 
we are Arab. You know, you say black, we say white. You say white, we say black. What we can do, I mean, we always do the opposite. If you have Arab and you want to lead them into something, say don't do that. They do the opposite. I'm telling you. No? If you want an Arab guy to open something for you or to do something, like, you know, tell him, don't do that. Okay? Right away, if you read the room, he will do exactly what you told him not to do. Yeah. Ask Fadi if you don't believe me. By the way, uh, today is the memory of 52 years victory Israel accomplished against three big armies sponsored by all the Muslims and the Arab. 52 years ago, three countries from three borders, Egypt, Jordan, and Syria, and within those armies, there's army from Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Algeria, you name it. They attack Israel from three directions, which mean all directions. And less than six hours, Israel defeated them all. It's not six day wars. It's, a, it's not true. It is six hours war. You see, six days is just to settle it down and finish it. <coughs> In six hours, the Arab, they accept defeat. Six hours only. Three big army. Israel at that time is not even a million population. It took six hours for Israel to destroy the major forces of the three major armies. At that time, Egypt is like 50 millions. You know, or maybe 45, I'm not sure. So the Egyptian, if they throw rocks at the Israeli army, they should destroy them. No, 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 my friend. It's not six days. Six days, it was the total of... Uh, because in six hours the war is finished after that there was like okay everybody stop in his his side and they start like just shooting you know uh, uh, funky bullets the war stopped after six hours at that time the united uh, the, the soviet union is the one who saved the arab from the ending it was only six hours six hours and then after that it took six days to settle the war for good Six hours only. And you, and you are backed by Soviet Union. And you are backed by all the money of the Muslims and all the fathers of Muslims. So what if you, you say back them? <laughs> and you know, if uh, uh, there is recording of at that day where the, uh, the, the, uh, the Egyptian TV was saying, today we will throw the Israeli in the sea. Today, by the end of this day, we are going to enter into Tel Aviv and we will throw all the Jewish in the sea. After six hours, all the air force of Egypt, Syria, Jordan destroyed. Bingo. America backed Israel with weapon. Here we go. You are backed with weapon. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, they have they keep buying billions and billions and billions of dollars for weapons. Still, you have no, you have no army. You don't have an army, and you will never have one. Uh, I, I don't want to change the topic to talk about politics, but just like for for uh, for a comedy. Uh, the leader of Hezbollah, Nasrallah, he said, "We 
we have a very high tech missiles I think let me find the article or the video So he threatened Israel that if you attack us now, we have a very high-tech missiles, okay? Before he finished his speech, the Israeli attack him in the south of Syria. The guy a second ago, he was saying, if you attack us again, you will see what we will do to you. Yeah, right. Muslims are very good at making speeches and they are very good in attacking each other. Uh, but in reality, that doesn't work. And the funny about, you know, Middle Eastern Arab Muslims, always they lose war and celebrate victory. If you don't believe me, ask Fadi, he is, he is there. They celebrate all the occasion they lost. all the occasion they lost in their war with israel they celebrate it as victory they lose they say we are victorious <laughs> they lost jerusalem they say we are victorious i mean you are no it's not about hypocrite it's it's a mentality you know there's a mental issue and this guy here you know we have a very accurate missiles. We can destroy Tel Aviv, etc. If you attack us again, we will, etc. Before he finished his fart, they shot him. Okay, do it. We are watching you. Go ahead. Do he dare? He don't dare. There's a video for uh, a sheikh from Al-Qaeda. He was teaching the young Muslims to attack the Syrian army. And he was saying, the Hur, brother, the Hur, the beautiful Hur, who their lips is so big and their breast is so huge, they are waiting for you. The Hur, if you touch her, she is so hot because she is waiting with the heat for you to take her. She's waiting for you. So the guy, like all those guys want to go and Allahu Akbar, victory, Allahu Akbar. The same guys who were, you know, praising Allah for the Hur is the same guys they were, you know, saying the F word to Allah and all the prophets because they noticed there's nothing there. The Syrian army captured them. They humiliated them and they showed them Allah for real. The same exactly what happened to Muhammad. He said to them that if 10 of you can fight 100. They went to the war, they lost. Hamas ruined the life of people in Gaza, but people don't mind. Uh, don't fool yourself, Fadi. What? Uh, all of you are the same. Hamas, not Hamas, all of you are the same. What Hamas, where is Hamas coming from? From the sky? They are from you. You are Hamas. You are from there, and you know what I'm talking about. I never saw corrupt nation as this nation. And I never saw corrupt people as they are, and yet they speak about dignity. Nobody speak about dignity as they do. Nobody speak about honor as they do. But you go to the store to buy tomato, the tomato is damaged. Potato is damaged. The beef is not a beef, it's a cat meat. The police is corrupt. The judge is corrupt. The president, the prince, the king is corrupt. Everything is corrupt, but no one of them, he don't fight, pray five times a day. Five times a day, brother. All of them, they say the name of Allah. Non-stop. Women are cheaters. Men are liars. Children's, every, um, corruption is the way of living there. And yet they speak about the West.
and then the United Nations they send them donation to educate them supposedly and they take it to marry more wives all the money you send to Gaza it goes for getting more wives in the best scenario some weapon <clears throat> Thank you, my friend from Malaysia. Why they hit their self with the chain? Because supposedly, when Ali, he went in war, uh, and the, 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 the grandsons of Muhammad, the Shia, they, did not, they abandoned him. They did not support him. So they believed that because they did not support him, really, he was killed. So they, they harmed himself as a penalty. For his death this is why they have a day it's called the day of Karbala uh, Matt who are you Matt why you want to call are you, you said you are a Muslim you are the Muslim I don't know who you are anyway I think we are done for today I just wanted to share this with you and in the same time if any of you would like to order the halal uh, pork you know uh, let us know we can contact the store and I think those sausages will taste good for many reasons they are halal as you see uh, which means Allah will approve Allah will bless your belly this is halal pork and it's very good yeah you know, once I was in the in the Philippines, and there's a Saudis sitting at a table, and you can tell the women with them. It's a restaurant. The women with them, they are hookers. Their skirt is like one inch. I'm not exaggerating if I say one inch. It's like wearing nothing. They have whiskey, they have beer, they have a fancy drink. And then when the waiter and waitress, they came to ask what food they like, you know, he said, do you have halal food? I mean, look at the madness. They are drinking whiskey. And beer and they have a prostitute with them in the table and now he want to eat halal pork and look look how decent we are halal please we eat only halal food alhamdulillah prostitute is okay black label is fine beer is wonderful but we eat only halal food no pork hmm? In the month of Ramadan, all of them, like if you go, if you go to the prostitution areas in those Asian countries or any countries, you will find all the customers are coming either from Saudi Arabia, especially from Saudi Arabia. They go to Kuwait, they go to Sarajevo, they go to Philippines, they go to Thailand. <clears throat> yeah. And once I saw a, a, a Saudi guy, he's drunk. He want to go out of the mall. You know, it's a, it's a mall, but it's like, like a, a yard. And there's like many restaurants, etc. He got a drunk. And now he want to leave to his hotel. But the wall, all of it is made from a glass. So he go and he walk, and then he hit the glass with his head. He want to get out, and he fell down. And he start cursing in Arabic. I swear by Allah, I will destroy you. Why you don't let me get out? <laughs> and then he stand up again and he go and he hit the glass. He want to go out, you know? He, he cannot notice this is not a door. You know, he want to get out. He's not able to recognize if it's a door or just a wall of a glass. And he curse again and the security do not know what he's saying. He's speaking Arabic. So I came to him and I said, listen, this is not a door. You have to go from there. There's no door here. And he starts shouting at me. He says, you are with them. May Allah curse you. Why you don't let me go? I said, you go, go, but you cannot go from here. You will break your head. This is a glass. This is not a door. The door from here. Go there. He said, no, I came from here. I want to go from here. <laughs> and his beard is long. He's a, he's a very, a very decent believer. Yeah. I feel sorry for him because he keep hitting his head in the, in the in glass. And you know, those glass are really thick. It's a, it's a, it's a, 
it's a wall it's a wall of, of uh, the, the window is a glass but it's very thick made for this so he he go back he think like the door is closed so he go back and he hit again you know oh boy <coughs> Amir would like to call you still in your open your Skype. <coughs> uh, who is Amir? I, I'm I'm done for today. You see, I I have an uh, infection in my uh, uh, ears, my ear, actually one of them, the left one. I don't know why the left one alone. Weird. I think Satan he he pissed in my ears as the prophet he said, and it's very annoying. <coughs> Anyway, guys, I think we are done for today. Uh, contact sent. Okay, what I would do with this guy now? He want to talk? He's a, he's a Muslim? Is he a Muslim? Yeah, I think maybe next time we can talk. No problem. All right, guys. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, feel free to download the video as fast as you wish because we don't keep them. And I hope if I can, if I am, I feel, I hope I will feel better tomorrow. I will come back online. But you know what? Even if I am sick, I think I will come out. I cannot, I cannot resist, resist to do what I do. This is the reality. Because I should not be talking right now because it's hurting. But uh look like I cannot resist it. Anyway, thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. And see you soon. Bye-bye.